I think everybody is feeling that we're in the midst of an extraordinary chaos, a chaos that's hard for a lot of people to understand, to connect all the dots. <clears throat> Too often we tend to get so absorbed in the immediate situation and react to it without understanding the causes. And um, I think it's really important that we at least try to understand the causes that have led to this current crisis of humanity. It almost feels like uh, we've been through a world war. And maybe we have been, maybe we are in a sort of slow burning world war. The interventions of the Soviet Union in Afghanistan, of the United States and NATO allies in Af Afghanistan, the United States in Iraq, the collapse in Syria, the events following the Arab Spring, Forces outside the Middle East have had a great impact on the Middle East and led to the collapse of civil society, the breakdown of social solidarity. And this is what we're dealing with as waves of refugees by the hundreds of thousands end up on the shores of the more secure countries in today's world. Um, so in this chaos, some people will react with fear and blame. And some people will be able to reach into the wisdom of their own souls and ask, what can I learn from this situation? Or what can humanity learn? What is humanity learning? This life we have, this life we're living in all of the events of our personal lives and the lives of, of nations, the soul of humanity is growing. It's maturing, we hope. That, I think, is where the hope lies. So it's so important that we don't react with fear, but we reach down into our own humanity and ask, how are we to deal with the needs of innocent people who are the victims of the abuse of power. Many of the people who are refugees now are people who made the decision in their home countries that none of the factions that are currently fighting deserve their loyalty. And they've made what may be their only honest decision they could make, which is to leave. And yet these same people are accused of uh, possibly being terrorists or having terrorists among them. Or <clears throat> they're viewed from a certain arrogance of other cultures as being inferior, less civilized. I don't think this is an ordinary migrant situation. These are not people who are just taking the option of crossing borders to find a better life. They're driven by the collapse of their societies. Some may actually wish to stay closer to home. Many do wish <coughs> in Jordan, Lebanon, Turkey. Many don't want to come to Europe. And others also see in Europe uh, the possibility of human rights, the possibility of a better economic future 
especially for their children. And I think they are especially motivated by their love of their children, almost more than anything else. Um, they are refugees. They're not just migrants, you know, choosing the option of a better economy. They're taking great risks in many cases. They're facing death. They're facing humiliation. They're facing, you know, just extraordinarily difficult conditions. Um, <clears throat> Maybe the truth is that in the end, we need to realize how much we need each other and how much we can benefit from each other. Europe can benefit from the energy uh, and appreciation of these people, if they can be given a home, if they can be welcomed, if they can be integrated with respect, um, then they would surely become loyal, contributing citizens to these European states. This is an opportunity to know each other. In Islamic teaching, it's said that the diversity of tribes, nations, and races serves a purpose. It serves the purpose of uh, allowing us to learn from each other and to compete in goodness. Islamic teaching, the, that is, from the Quran, doesn't describe a monopoly on truth or morality to any one people or even any one religion. So here is an extraordinary opportunity for us all to learn from each other. Um, for people of the Middle East to realize perhaps that Europeans, for instance, may not be as decadent as they may have thought when they're greeted with warmth and love and hospitality by some people. They um, can feel their common human humanity with Europeans. And Europeans, on the other hand, will be meeting <coughs> values perhaps that they didn't even know existed. The real altruism that you often find among Muslims. Um, the humanity, the generosity, the virtues, even the family values. It's extraordinary how generously some Middle Eastern countries have received these innocent people in need. Lebanon, Jordan are now inhabited by a huge minority of people who are refugees. Um, and yet some of the Western countries like the United States and Britain are still arguing over whether 10 or 20,000 refugees should be admitted at all. Um, I think these countries in the Middle East <coughs> which are made up not just of Muslims, but of also Arab Christians, for instance, uh, have been an extraordinary example. Lebanon, I think, which has a th nearly a third of its population is made up of refugees. Jordan, something similar. Turkey, too, has received an uh, extraordinary number of refugees and has, by now, I hear, contributed 10 billion euros or more to help support these people. So <clears throat> an opportunity for human solidarity to be experienced, for the human heart to open, even while we see lots of examples of reaction and tremendous fear and 
some of us get so preoccupied with our own security and privilege that we react very negatively and we project on the other uh, a sense of evil, a sense of threat. But humanity is um, experiencing an opportunity for growth, for a new maturity. <clears throat> At a time when humanity is converging, we are, if not becoming one, we are having to be reconciled to our differences. And beneath all of that, even more importantly, to recognize that we have the same tender, common human emotions, and we're not so different, despite our cultural, religious, and political differences. It's an extraordinary opportunity to <coughs> meet the other and awaken to a new sense of humanity. So every crisis, every tragedy, all the tantrums and arguments that humanity is having right now are an opportunity um, for truth and for love. Americans and Europeans attribute more value to the lives of Westerners than they do uh, <coughs> to the lives of people from developing countries. They just somehow imagine that we are somehow a different people. We're educated. We, we function in society. We <coughs> are gainfully employed. We're somehow special. Um, maybe we're even more intelligent than those people. Maybe in some way we are more deserving, more moral, because we have achieved in our own countries something like the rule of law. But they're forgetting history. They're forgetting the history of when civilization in the Middle East was higher than civilization in Europe or America. They're forgetting that, you know, cultures rise and fall. Um, and some cultures that are on the rise now and have never experienced humiliation cannot conceive of the hardship that people just like themselves are experiencing. It's very strange, but when we listen to people who don't speak our own native language very well, we think they're somehow maybe less intelligent than we are, less capable. So all the ways that we other, other human beings, <coughs> the way we judge them and dismiss them or marginalize them. The only way to break through these prejudices and assumptions is to actually get to know each other. Maybe we're being given that opportunity now.